Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Rob Viglione. I am from Horizon, one of the co-founders for Horizon and the CEO of Horizon Labs. So I'm here to give you a little bit of a background of, of you know, how I got to where I am right now with, with our project and all of the cool lessons that hopefully are interesting to you guys uh, that we learned along the way. So starting out with what is, uh, what is Horizon and you know, what, what's our value proposition, what are, where are we positioning ourselves in the market, and why does this even matter for you guys? Well, uh, I started Horizon with a co-founder a few years ago, so three years ago. Uh, it was a project called Zencash, and what it was at the time was really a hobby project meant to carve out a couple of problems that we saw in the Bitcoin industry, um, particularly on the sustainability of the economic models in, in the Bitcoin ecosystem, then also thinking about privacy as a value proposition that we could plug into a product that could actually scale. Um, so we were very excited with the zero knowledge cryptography that Zcash brought to market on coin transfers. And our goal was to actually extend this technology into other types of data structures that could be used in the real world. Um, so this was not meant to be uh, a company. This was not meant to be uh, the ecosystem that we have today, but it just started out as a, a simple project that we just got pulled into and absolutely loved it and had that community explode around us. Uh, that to this day has been just a, an extremely rewarding experience that, that got us all to just dive into this full time and never look back. Um, so we launched in 2017 amidst the irrational exuberance of that, uh, that early stage market. And you know, Bitcoin was launched in 2009 and the industry evolved up to the point where in 2017, it looked like things just hit a crescendo. And, uh, you know, I, I can look back ex post and say there was a bit of or a lot of irrational exuberance and we can learn some lessons from this. So um, we, we launched in 2017 when things were going crazy on the positive side. And then 2018, things took the exact reverse and swung negative uh, where the market had entirely crashed. So the big lessons to be learned are that um, you, you can certainly enjoy the experiences of a boom market or bull market and try to take the advantage of the best of it and try to learn to discern a signal from the noise of what's going on. But you also have to build your organization so that it can be robust to the inevitable extreme volatility of this crypto industry. So if you're trying to carve out a business for yourself in this industry, there are certainly pros and some big cons with it. And I can tell you, uh, our organization has been, you know, has seen uh, many of these pros and experienced firsthand many of the cons that can happen in the industry. Um, so the, the most important thing that I can say on a budget perspective is as you're carving out your business here and you are entering the crypto market and whether or not you are fundraising in a token environment or keeping significant or non-trivial portions of your capital reserves in crypto, uh, whether it's cryptocurrencies or tokens, your own token or other projects, uh, you really have to diversify. You really have to just internalize the reality that this is an extremely volatile industry and try to protect from the downside while taking advantage of the upside that this affords. The horizon as a project has gone through many ups and downs. We've gone through some downs in the bear markets where our revenues were slammed. I, I could say after the fact now, 90% or more of our budget had been you know, slammed at certain points. And it's really tough as an entrepreneur to think, how are you going to program out? Number one, you have to figure out what is, what is going to be your unique contribution to the marketplace? What's your product? How are you going to achieve product market fit? How are you going to develop a strategy and an organization that can actually deliver on that? And then once you actually figure out these really tough questions, you have to actually program uh, a budget and program a team, you know, hire people and actually uh, get them to work, carve out tasks for them and have project plans and so forth so that you can actually get something to market in a meaningful time and something that actually has a meaningful impact on the market. And then imagine your revenue collapsing 90% after you've already programmed these things in. Well, it happened to us and we've actually gone through three of these budget crises uh, where we've had to figure out how are we going to protect ourselves on the downside, uh, protect our team because we have real people that we're talking about here, not just numbers. Um, on a spreadsheet that we should think about um, the human impact of what's going on. And as entrepreneurs in this industry, you need to think about how you're going to you know, protect your organization from these downsides, but still at the same time, make sure that your team's exposed to some of the upsides. We've also been through some, something called a 51% attack, which if you are a public blockchain project, 
you never want to go through a 51% attack. This is probably one of the worst things from a reputational perspective that can happen to your project. And it happened to us and we dealt with it and we recovered. So it's one of these things that shows that if your organization itself at its core is resilient um, to all sorts of pressures, you will go on and you just need to plan for these things and make sure that um, you do bounce back and you don't uh, you get crushed in the mayhem that can happen in the industry. So we've had to learn a lot about resilience um, and you, we are still having to learn more about resilience three years into this. And three years sounds like nothing in the grand scheme of life, but three years in the crypto industry make, does make us veterans. And of all of the hot new projects that are entering the market right now, it does feel like we're seeing history repeat itself. Uh, and like Mark Twain said, history doesn't necessarily repeat itself, but it certainly does rhyme. And what's going on right now in the decentralized finance or DeFi world, or segment of this industry, certainly does feel like it rhymes with what happened in the ICO days of 2017 and the bull, the bull market that you know, built out around that. So for us, it's let's you know we carve out our unique niche in this industry, and we we've just launched our product after three years of operating as a public blockchain. We finally launched what we set out to do three years ago, which was this platform that's fully scalable, decentralized, and has at, at its core, these zero knowledge cryptographic privacy tools that I think are absolutely critical for public blockchains to really scale into the real world. Um, so for us, it took us years to get to where we are. Uh, one could read any number of management books or Drucker narratives on you know, how, to, how to you know, manage an organization and volatility and maintain grit and all that. But I actually like to look to the honey badger as our our role model and our example of how we you know, just keep on going. We set our strategy for something that we, we know is meaningful in the marketplace. We're very data driven, so we don't want to just go with our prior beliefs of thinking we know it all, but we set out a solid strategy. We you know built a team, a fantastic organization around that and a solid community all aligned with the strategic goal of getting to where we are. We finally released our product after three years. And I have to say it's, it's an extremely rewarding experience but for us, the, the marathon, we're still just in the first leg of this marathon and we're looking for the long term. So that's what I highly recommend for everyone. So, and what I've done here is I've carved out some lessons learned that I wanted to impart in this video. Take it with a grain of salt or for what it's worth. But there's a whole bunch of practical stuff that if you're in the crypto industry, number one, you should use the peer-to-peer -peer financing tools that are available now. And these are tools in the crowdfunding space that were not available to the world 10 years ago. Or maybe they were available in concept, but the proper regulatory environments or actual products weren't out there yet to the extent that they are now. And the positive aspects of what happened in the 2017 ICO or initial coin offering craze was that we had really the formation of a new financing channel for startups that came about. Now, maybe it went too far at the time where anyone with a website and a white paper that they you know, copy and pasted from another project and did a global search and replace for terms, was actually able to raise way too much money. And that was something that, you know, probably exceeded any rational equilibrium. But the key thing is that now a new financing channel exists and you as an entrepreneur absolutely should understand what products are out there and how you can leverage them to your own effect as a company and you know, building your organization that you want to deliver the products in, to your community that you need. So, what I'm a fan of in this, this uh, crowdfunding peer-to-peer -peer marketplace and the way that we operate, a little insight into how Horizon's business model works is the foundation right now is the custodian of a treasury pool that's in process of democratizing where we'll actually get stakeholders directly voting on how funds should be used. But for now, the treasury is custodian of these funds and 20% of, uh, of the rewards for every block that's mined on the Horizon blockchain goes into this treasury pool. It's owned by the community and is used to fund community operations, software development, and so forth, all of the business operations as well, and building the ecosystem. And what I like about our model is that it's an incremental funding model. So it's not one where we went out and convinced people to give us a billion dollars, you know, three years ago, and we just trying to figure out how to intertemporally allocate this billion dollars or a hundred million dollars or tens of millions of dollars, or whatever it is that projects have done. I don't think that that's very efficient. And I can tell you as an entrepreneur, you probably don't want too much money up front. And maybe that sounds crazy, but the reality is if you're in this for the long run, if you're not looking at your business as an exit scam and you're looking for actually creating long-term value, 
you should think about an incremental funding model where you can actually raise capital as you're proving yourself. And actually, you should prove yourself first and then raise capital second. So let's not reverse the order here. And I think that that was one of the big structural problems with the 2017 ICO boom was that we had a reversal of that. People were raising money well in advance of actually doing anything of value, well in advance of actually proving themselves. So that you know, should it have gone away. And you as an entrepreneur, if you're building a solid business, a real business, you should adopt this incremental funding approach where you prove yourself and then you raise capital. In a way, it's an analogous to the way that venture capital has always worked, where you prove yourself and then you go and petition you know, professionals to raise capital, and then they give you funds in an incremental fashion in different series or rounds of investment that are based on actual performance. So the more that we can mimic that, or the more that we can map that old way of doing business to the new tools that are available in the crypto peer-to-peer -peer environment, the better off we'll be. And we do this as a project with Horizon, uh, right now, the open source public blockchain, and we have a companion company that I mentioned early on called Horizon Labs, which is the commercial arm to our ecosystem. And this, we actually raised venture capital, and we're doing that in more of a traditional route. So my next bit of advice is, to the extent that you can, the more of a hybrid model that you can drive from the old way of doing business and the old way of financing through venture capital to the new way of this peer-to-peer -peer crowd marketplace. If you can combine the two and carve out your space in a way like what we're doing with Horizon and Horizon Labs, to me, that's optimal. And if you do this in an incremental funding way, you can actually improve what you're, improve what you're doing and raise capital as you go. Now, the last thing I'll say is why you, you would want as an entrepreneur a binding budget constraint is because I'll tell you from my experience, I have no idea where the industry is going to be five years from now or 10 years from now. We work on annual cycles of how we do project planning, and we work on a three to five year strategic horizon for where, where we point the ship and how we're, we're targeting our strategy. I have no idea what the industry is going to look like in the five to 10 year horizon. So I would not want to actually have all of the capital that we would ever raise up front because I have no idea what that investment opportunity set for me as a project is going to look like, as a company is going to look like. So it, the advice that I have for you guys is don't aim to raise all of your money up front. Aim for a more rational incremental funding approach and use the tools that are out there in the marketplace. Now, from a practical perspective, Think about what to do when you actually raise money, because if you're successful on the fundraising, you're going to have to enter the next phase of your project of programming in your strategy and what the steps you're going to need to do to accomplish your strategy. And you're going to be sitting on a bunch of capital that you're going to have to time phase the allocation of to achieve that strategy. What I highly recommend is if you raise capital in the cryptocurrency world, diversify, hold a bunch of US dollars, hold euro, whatever your, your native currency is and what you feel more comfortable in diversify and think about the burn rate and the runway that you're going to need. In the startup world, what we call a, a runway is the amount of capital that you have to achieve the strategy that you, you're aiming for, the product market fit that you're targeting, and you need a budget to make that happen. That's what we call a runway. And the runway is uh, your budget burned down all the way to zero. And you hope that by the time you get to zero, you actually have a product that you can go and start earning revenue on. That's the goal as entrepreneurs is to have that product that's earning revenue but in the tech startup world, we have a whole process for building that product and doing the innovation, the R&D, the proofs of concept, the beta, you know, the alpha, the beta testing, uh, the, the iterative design that's going to take and community feed, feedback and product, uh, product feedback before we actually get something that really earns solid revenue. So you want to make sure that you're carving away enough of a budget to make that happen without being susceptible at the core of your business, the volatility that's inherent in this industry. To diversify, park a bunch of your capital in US dollars and euro, anything else that's stable to make sure that you can weather the inevitable downturns that will happen. Try not to get too caught up in the euphoria of the industry. Right now, certain segments of the industry, like, in, like I mentioned earlier, DeFi, are experiencing a certain euphoria that they should not expect to persist. Enjoy it while it lasts, try to learn from it, capitalize on it, but don't think that this is the way that your business will just fall into your lap and everything will be, you know, uh, perfectly handed to you for the long term. That's not going to happen. That's not reality. Expect volatility, prepare financially for it, diversify and hedge your bets uh, and make sure that you're always looking at the long term for things. Okay. On an organizational perspective, you raise a bunch of capital and you build a team and hopefully you're able to find the right people to achieve your strategy and actually execute on your strategy to get something meaningful to market. Make sure that you incentivize them properly. 
team culture, org culture, company culture, these are things that are absolutely critical. And there are, there's a whole literature on them and how they're, they're, they're uh, critical to achieving success. Now, the reality is once you get out there as an entrepreneur, everything is going to be you know, look like um, hieroglyphics, where what do you do, how do you actually execute these things? And if you have the good fortune of bringing the right people together in the team and motivating them sufficiently, you need to think about the, the structure of their compensation and think through things long term. So um, projects, just some practical experience, projects in this industry from the 2017 days on have um, botched the incentive thing. So they're either paying them, their people too fixed of a compensation and all of the upside accrues to uh, owners and founders and early investors. That's probably not the right sustainable long-term approach. You want to make sure that everyone on the team is rewarded appropriately for their contributions and make sure that they have you know, some stability on their, their current pay. This is where hedging on the currency side plays a big role. Make sure that you're not giving them too many of the upside incentives too early. So some projects have also been victims of their own success where a token or a coin has skyrocketed and all of a sudden their employees don't need to work anymore and you lose your key talent and the project suffers a serious uh, setback from that. So make sure you try to balance things properly. You want to reward people for their contribution on the margin and make sure that we're all participating on the upside when things go well but do things on the upside in the long term. So think like your coin or your token should be like a stock option um, in, a, in the traditional corporate finance setting. Um, let's see, so what else? So finally, what I'll end up here on guys is that we are in a huge blue ocean environment or blue ocean marketplace right now. And what this, this means in the academic literature is that the competitive playing field is wide open. If you see some projects that are early on that look like they're clear winners, don't get disheartened because MySpace looked like a clear winner as well before Facebook came into the mix and completely wiped it out. So where we are right now as an industry is even pre-MySpace days, if you were to have an analogy back to the early days of the internet, it is really early. And I can tell you of the $65 trillion in global GDP that goes out there, no one cares about cryptocurrencies. No one cares about blockchain. And what we're doing here is completely new and everything is wide open. So don't look at the big projects and think that, you know, in, in a discouraging way at all. Look at them as role models and examples and think, what can you learn so that you can take it and do it better? And I guarantee you there, there is a niche and there's an element of the industry. Every project is doing something wrong. And every project, for as much as they're doing right for various segments of the market, there are always other market segments and niches for which they're not addressing or they're addressing them inefficiently. So there's always an opportunity. Keep that in mind. Finally, I'll say in this industry, it's all about communities. Communities are the new customers. So don't think of in the old, the old business model way of customers buying something from you. Think first about communities and customers will follow because your community will be converted to be your customers long term. So do you have the right social message that resonates with your customers, with your community? The communities care about something bigger and more meaningful than just a product and some, some cool new technology. If all you have is a cool new tech and you haven't figured out some social value that that's bringing to the world, you're probably behind the game. Think more in, in, in the terms of social models and how you're, you're contributing to society and how your technology is a key element of that. And then think about the message that you're giving to your community. Are you actually getting through to your community? You're building your community. Are they excited? Is your community taking actions to promote your project organically without you having to do anything? And this is the ultimate state of where we all, all want to get. And the more successful you'll be will be a function of how you're actually able to resonate with your community here. So ultimately, what we want to do as entrepreneurs is we want to toe the line, find a balance between being aggressive on your strategy with being conservative with making sure that you have the budget to achieve your strategy in the long run. So I've given you some advice of you know, what we've experienced with Horizon and Horizon Labs, all of the ups and downs. And it's kind of crazy to think that three years we you know, really feel like veterans of an industry is kind of insane. And maybe in hindsight, I will look back and laugh at this. But uh, the reality is you, can, you will experience a lot in this industry. The volatility is insane. And the experiences that you will have will be at probably 10 times the normal rate that you would have as a tech entrepreneur. Enjoy it, have fun, and try to do something meaningful. Thank you.